This week on Live Bait, we'll hear how the fish farming community rallies around each other during tough times. We'll have a cell phone version of First Fish, and we'll talk about quality rods and what not to do when buying a new one. It's all coming up on Live Bait. Jim, I feel like I'm in a museum honoring everything that we love. <laughs> right on top like that. And there's our Palomar knot. I think I do not want to let that one go. Healthy, hardy, and safe certified Arkansas bait fish. We hope you're enjoying this very unique fishing series. Now we're going for the foundations of fishing by keeping it simple, a hook and a minnow. And today we're gonna to talk about one of the fish farming families who's got a great story to tell, but he's also got some great water to fish. And that's something that six-year-old Maggie and 11-year-old Porter know very well. Real, real All right, good. I already caught me a fish. That I get to fish and have fun outdoors. How are you fishing for? What do you got for bait? What's your rod? Um, it's a baby rod and we get minnows. Maggie and Porter got to the water two hours before we did. They've been catching fish as fast as they can and they aren't letting up. I like fishing because uh, you can catch a decent amount of fish. You can take some home and eat. Go come and eat them. And it's pretty fun to fish. You can come out here with your friends, family, and have a good, awesome time. I caught one right now. It's a big one. And this is the big one. And look how the fin is kind of shiny a little bit whenever you put it in the shade. Crappie, what's huge mungus and it has a shiny tail. Gets her out of the house, away from electronics, real sis. And uh, she really enjoys it. Uh, she learns, you know, about nature and where our food comes from. And that's the main thing with us. We're an outdoor oriented family and uh, we want to teach our kids. She's got a younger brother also. Uh, we want to teach them about the outdoors and the sustainability and where our food comes from mainly. We're, we're all outdoorsmen and like to hunt and fish. This time of year we really like to fish, so kids love it. This is how you do it. This massive one. What do you think about that fish? What are you going to do with that? I'm um, going uh, throw it back in the water and start over again. While Maggie and Porter are experienced anglers, we love to feature anyone catching their first ever fish. Here's some cell phone footage of five-year-old Marin catching her first fish, which was a bass. There she is. She is an official fisherman. All right, what's his name? Maybe Greeny, because he has lots of green money. Ah, Greeny, okay, that's a good name. All right, you got him? Whee! Good job. How did that feel catching your first fish? Fun. You gonna give me a high five? The minnows that help us catch all these fish are raised by farmers primarily all from one part of the country. When live bait comes back, we'll hear their story of how they rally for each other during tough times.
We will feature a lot of your photos throughout this season. Send them in to fishphotos at livebaittv.com. Anderson Brothers Fish Farm focuses on one thing, minnows. They got their start back in 1990 when an opportunity presented itself. Now keep in mind, 90% of all of the farm-raised bait in the country comes out of three counties in Arkansas. They are all very similar, and yet they're also very different in how those farms got started. Anderson Brothers has a unique twist when Mother Nature nearly washed it all away. I'm Ronnie Anderson with Anderson Brothers Fisheries in Lone Oak, Arkansas. Ronnie Anderson and his brother Mike got their start working for IF Anderson Farms just down the road in Lone Oak, Arkansas. Their dad worked at IF Anderson for 30 years. Son Ronnie put in 20. And enjoyed every minute of it. Learned most everything I know right there at that farm between Mr. Fay Anderson and Neil Anderson. So it was an enjoyable part of my life. But we've We've enjoyed what we've done for all these years, and, and we've had offers to buy the farm and things, but we wouldn't, have, we wouldn't know what else to do. His brother Mike was a research engineer at Dow Chemical in Texas, but he longed to farm and come back home. He started small, but eventually got large enough to lure Ronnie into what is now Anderson Brothers Fisheries. We both enjoy this kind of work, and it's that's that you get up every day and come to your farm and do your thing. Mike takes care of the production end of it. I take care of the processing and the sales end of it. The brothers have done well on their own, but this group of bait fish farmers is also a tight knit community, which came to the brothers' aid at a key moment when the farm was threatened. You know, one of the things that you learn if you've been watching this show, you've appreciated the fact that all of these bait fish farmers have one thing in common, a, a tremendous work ethic, but also there's a camaraderie. Yeah. There's just a level of, of kindness and friendliness towards one another in this industry that keeps things going. That's right. We, uh, we were flooded out here in 2011 and we lost 75% of the farm. Uh, it was totally underwater, and all the minnows swam out, and all the game fish in the bows, and all swam in, so we had a mess. Everything had to be drained, poisoned, levees rebuilt. No minnows, it was in May, and so we lost the bulk of our new crop, and the rest of our old crop. But with the help of other growers, which Coldstream helped us, Neil Anderson helped us, James Saul and them helped us, and other farmers pitched in or offered to do whatever. And they kept us in business until we could rebuild and, and get back in. So yeah, you, uh, if a farmer's in need, you know, you want to do what you can for them. They certainly did for us, so, and we would for them. Well, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I enjoy it, and I get up every day. I come right out here, so it's, uh, it's where I like to be. And that's the other common thread. It's a lifestyle. Everybody says pretty much the same thing. They love waking up. They love what they do. Yeah. And they love seeing what they have built. Right, right. And just like with those kids that we saw out there fishing on the pond today, you play a major part in helping people, current generation, next generation, enjoy the sport of fishing by providing those minnows so that they can go out and catch fish like that. Well, we, we hope we are, yeah. you know, we like to think we are. And I know a lot of, I never saw a kid that didn't want to try to go fishing. So what they needed is an opportunity and and something to fish with. When Live Bait returns, we'll give you some great advice on buying a new rod, and we'll learn how birds make sure they get their cut of your bait.
We will feature a lot of your photos throughout this season. Send them in to fishphotos at livebaittv.com. We've used the certified Arkansas bait fish. And what makes the certified Arkansas bait fish great is it's a wonderful way to introduce kids to fishing in a way that makes it fun and effective and it'll keep them coming back. Healthy, hearty, and safe, certified Arkansas bait fish. Getting a minnow to your bait shop takes more than just a few moving parts. It's an entire operation with years of innovation to get that minnow to your hook. It all starts with a hatchery. About 20 years ago, most of the certified bait fish farms realized the benefits of a controlled environment. Weather was no longer a factor and such a vital part of the entire process. The eggs are laid on mats and then the mats are placed in temperature controlled tanks. After several days, the young fish are placed in ponds. These ponds range from just a couple of acres in size to as large as 75 acres. Aerators and food make these ponds the growing stage for the next few months, depending on the desired size. Ponds typically are four feet deep or less. Once the fish are ready to go, the ponds are saned. Big nets come and get the harvest and place them in a truck to head back to the holding tanks. Once in the tanks, they are sized to match the desired specs and placed in the cooler water to help the fish adapt for the trip ahead. Shipping takes place either in trucks from the farm or FedEx. Either way, these fish are healthy, hardy, and safe from start to finish. So this is kind of interesting because a lot of people think that the bait fish ferry just shows up in the local bait shop every morning <laughs> and delivers the bait fish. But we have seen the process of what it takes to be able to get these fish from the hatchery, out to the ponds, into the tanks, out to the trucks, and then out to the bait shop. There's a lot of care that goes in to keep those fish healthy, hardy, and safe. That's right, that's right. You spend a lot of time and a lot of effort to try to make sure when the bait shop owner gets them, he's happy with them. And he can hold them a few days till he gets them sold. Saning is a very common activity on a bait fish farm. Large, heavy nets corral all of the minnows to begin their journey to your bait shop. Now, water temperature is critical during this process, especially on a hot summer day. So a lot of times people don't realize the, the temperature difference of the temperature in the water here in the pond, right. then getting it into the tanks, right. and then shipping it out to the bait shop. That's oh, yeah. an important, uh, it's an essential part of this process. That's right, and, and it's worse this time of year. Mm -hmm. and, uh, like on these trucks, we blend palm water and well water, so we bring the temperature down a little bit right here. Then when they get to the shed, they'll dump into that same water a blend of palm water that we pump up there and well water that's pumped up there, all filtered, mm -hmm. but it, keeps the temperature fairly equal with what we have on the truck. Then we'll gradually shut the palm water down and let the well water cool it off a little mm -hmm. bit. And by the next morning, it'll be down this time of year about 70 degrees in the holding tanks. But right now, that water's probably 85 degrees. Mm -hmm. So, and that's too big a shock if you do too much too fast. But, uh, but temperature, temperature's really important. Yeah. So uh, we've, we've tried and failed a lot of different things, so we, we know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Ronnie, this is kind of a neat part of this, all of these tanks. So we just saw the seining that took place out there on the pond. Uh, that was the first time that the fish got a taste of a slightly lower temperature. And then they come in here and they get a little bit more, right? That's right. We'll gradually change the temperature down by morning it'll be dropped down to about 70 degrees okay. and they'll be ready then to, to process. We can handle them without hurting them and they'll be ready to load. So they like to haul them in fairly mid 50s to 60 degrees and uh, that holds a lot of oxygen. That water will hold a lot of oxygen at that temperature. You can crowd the fish up more mm -hmm. to haul. Like any business, an owner can work hard all day long and worry all night. 
On a bait fish farm, he has good reason to lose some sleep. As far as at night, what you mainly do is worry about what's everything gonna look like in the morning. <laughs> you know, hot weather and low oxygen in ponds or floods, whatever. You, you got something to think about at night, so it's a, occasionally you get to get a good night's sleep. <laughs> but, and we have crews in the fall that have to come in and work at night to keep pelicans off. Pelicans have become a real problem over the last few years. And they'll feed at night. And it's, it's hard to do anything with them. For these winged thieves, these ponds are a huge all-you-can-eat buffet, a gift to engorge. They've learned over the years where to come to, you know, in their migration patterns. And it's just like a duck. They go wherever they could get the food. Well, they're going to be back next year, and they usually are. So you got to raise a lot of them to have enough to sell and enough for them, too. So it's kind of a mess sometimes. <laughs> Anderson Brothers raises plenty of great bait for the pelicans and for you. And when Live Bait returns, we'll head out to ICAST and get some great tips on buying that new rod. We will feature a lot of your photos throughout this season. Send them in to fishphotos at livebaittv.com. ICAST is the largest fishing trade show in the country. It takes place every year in Orlando, Florida. Let's head out there right now for some tips on buying rods from the pros. All right, folks, I've got Michael Neal here with us, and we're going to talk about rods because it can be very intimidating for a new angler, a wannabe, and, and some, uh, kids and parents. They walk into a store, and they see a row of rods, and it can kind of be dizzying, and they don't know what to get. So kind of give us the 101 on fishing rods. You know, there's you got all kinds of different factors. you got price, you got sensitivity, you got durability, you got length, action. Uh, just all kinds of different things, powers, but you know, it really breaks down to if you're going live bait fish, it's really not complicated. And with the price, I'll start with that one. Actually, typically the cheaper a rod is, the more durable it's going to be. It's actually made out of cheaper materials, but the cheaper materials are more durable than the high end, which may be more sensitive. But if you're fishing with a bobber or live bait fish and things like that, sensitivity is not an issue. So price is something you don't have to be intimidated by. Lengthwise, I try and tell everybody to stay within the six and a half foot to seven foot range. There's really not a lot of difference that helps you be able to cast further, have better hook sets and things like that. You use longer leaders on bobbers. A little longer than that, they get a little cumbersome, too short. They get really hard to cast. So say somewhere in that six foot six to seven foot range, uh, spinning rods and a medium action. So a medium action is like this rod. It's gonna have some flex to it. It's not gonna be super stiff. A heavy would be really stiff. You really don't want that for live bait fishing. You want something that especially a kid can enjoy. Yeah. And the lighter action the rod is, the more they're gonna feel like they have a shark on the other end of the line. So, <laughs> you know, somewhere in that six foot six to seven foot medium action rod is what I try and tell most people to get. You can do anything in the world with that rod. Just set your drag right and have a good time. Tell me a little bit about your history with fishing. Well, I, I imagine you started at a young age. I did. I, I've had a great family that uh, took me fishing from a very young age. Uh, you know, from bank fishing, pond fishing, canoe fishing out in the lake with my grandfather. Just a little bit of everything. Uh, fished a little bit for every kind of different species. So. Well, when you're young and when you can get a kid out there just to catch any kind of fish is a big deal. But I, I graduated from that and just enjoyed tournament fishing. Uh, again, with the same family members, my dad, my uncle, my grandfather, and uh, eventually made my way up to Major League Fishing Bass Pro Tour. So uh, it's been a good career and I uh, look forward to many more years, hopefully. Good deal. For any parents who are watching right now and, and thinking about getting their kids involved with fishing, what kind of advice would you give them to get started? Just uh, don't get too frustrated with them. I mean, it's, it's going to take them a little while to get used to casting on their own, 
uh, reeling fish in, understanding what's going on, but just give them a little bit of uh, a time to get used to it and just try and put them around fish. It, don't worry about the size of the fish to start with or, or what kind of fish, just any kind of live bait, you can catch any kind of fish on any kind of species, whether it's crappie, bluegill, catfish, bass, any of the above, you know, night crawlers or minnows, whatever like that. Just start with live bait, start simple. You don't have to pour a whole lot of money into it and just go out and uh, enjoy the great outdoors. You know, and that's one of the misnomers. A lot of the people think it's very expensive to get involved. They, oh, I gotta buy a $70,000, $80,000 bass boat. I gotta buy, you know, two dozen rods and all that. You really don't. No, I mean, you can, uh, even doing what I'm doing, it seems like if I just took six rods, I could travel all around the country and do everything I need to do. So, I mean, you start with just one rod per person that's going, and that's, that's plenty all you gotta do. And like I said, price is not that big of an issue. Uh, durability is really good even in the lower price ranges so just whatever you can afford to get out there whether it's a small boat or just bank fishing or pond fishing whatever it may be it's going to be a good time. And there you have it some great advice from one of the top anglers today who got his start just like this with a hook and a minnow. Next week we'll feature a young man who caught his first crappie six years ago with a nine-time world champion. They had a reunion trip this year and caught plenty more. Plus, another great fish farm family story. Thank you for watching this week on Live Bait.